well, I mean, I'm just here to help him, right? And so I just think we should do it today. Let's just call for it. I'll, I'll make the motion, Mr. Chairman. I want to help you out. You can second it, right? Like, make the motion to impeach President Biden. Go ahead. It's your turn. Se you second it. No, nothing. Okay, we got nothing. So I want to, with my last couple of minutes, show the American people that they're never going to impeach Joe Biden. It's never going to happen because they don't have the evidence. Okay, this is a show. It's all fake. They just want to do these hearings. It's not leading to impeachment. They're lying to their base on Newsmax and Fox, leading these people to believe that they're going to eventually impeach the president. It's not going to happen at all, ever. Period. They don't even have the votes, even if they had it in committee. They don't have the votes on the floor. They know that. They got members resigning rather than taking a vote on the fake faux impeachment. Just ask Ken Buck, who said the speaker ain't going to get me to take an unconstitutional impeachment vote. That was probably my favorite moment from any congressional hearing that we've covered. That happened this week where Democratic Congress member Jared Moskowitz dared the MAGA Republicans to introduce a vote for the impeachment of President Biden, which they don't have the votes for, and there was no underlying crimes committed, and the MAGA Republicans just want to spread propaganda. So there, Congress member Moskowitz just said, okay, I'll introduce the vote. Who wants to second it? Let's impeach him. Who wants to impeach him? And the MAGA Republicans went silent and Democratic Congress member Moskowitz just exposed them right there. But this entire Democratic crew right here with Moskowitz, with Jasmine Crockett, with uh, Swalwell, with Goldman and Rast, this whole AOC, this whole crew though, is bringing a newfound energy. And for everybody who was saying, where is the democratic messaging? Folks, it is here. So I just wanna go through what went down at this hearing in a way that hasn't been covered anywhere else. So I showed you there, Democratic Congress member Jared Moskowitz, what he said, here is Democratic Congress member Dan Goldman as the witness, Tony Babaluski, he tries to duck and weave. You'll see Goldman just say, shut up. Here, play this clip. I did not uh, call this uh, as six FBI agents Sarah, liars. I'm talking. Uh, if you go to page... Well, you know better, Mr. Goldman. Okay, go to page 174 of the transcript, and you said it's not an accurate statement. It's a lie related to an FBI report. I didn't call them Sorry, liars. I don't the have time. Be quiet. Now... This Next, you know, we always love to showcase Congresswoman Jasmine Crockett here. Let's play this clip of her. I want to be clear that when we were behind closed doors, you called a number of people liars. You called the Wall Street Journal liars. You called Cassidy Hutchison a liar. You she called is. the FBI a liar. You called Rob Walker a liar. You called James Gillier a liar. You called Hunter Biden a liar. You called Jim Biden a liar. And just today, you added to your list, you called my colleague, Congressman Mr. Goldman, a liar as well. It seems like, according to you, the only person that's telling the truth is you and everyone else is lying. But... I want to move on to something else. Is that a question? It's or? not a question. Okay. You'll know when I ask you a question, I promise. Thank you. Here we have Democratic Congress member Robert Garcia, and he's just been crushing it uh, in Congress. Play this clip. And I just want to, just for the record, be very clear that in Mr. Robolinski's testimony, has, he has provided zero evidence, zero evidence of any sort of link between Hunter Biden and the president as far as it relates to the business dealings. And so once again, we're back to a hearing where no evidence is being provided of any sort of wrongdoing by the president. But I want to go that, back. That's Mr. a blatant Bubulinski. lie. Actually, it's my time, sir. Mr. Bobulinski, I want to. It was a great moment right here where Congress member Moskowitz was speaking to one of the MAGA Republican witnesses. And this witness had like zero credibility. He was someone who like showed up with Donald Trump at the debates in 2020. This is somebody who like was wearing a mask when he met with Mark Meadows back in 20. I mean, someone with zero zip zilch credibility. And watch what watch how Moskowitz treats him. It's incredible. Play this clip. You can be damn sure they would have called the vote by now, right? But they want it to go on. They well, they either want it to go on because they don't have the evidence. Are you asking me a question? Oh, no, I'm no, I'm just oh. looking at you. Oh, okay. But, but we, if you want to talk to me, we can talk. Well, no, I think you haven't read uh, recent data that shows American people are well aware of the Biden's corruption. Perfect. So then ask the chairman why he hasn't called for impeachment, Tony. 
He's right here. Ask, ask Comer. Hey, Comer, how come you haven't called for impeachment? I'll do it. Watch. Hi, I'm Tony. Hey, Chairman, how come you haven't called for impeachment? When are we going to have the hearing? When is the vote going to happen? I mean, I, you believe it. He believes it. He says it every day on TV. I just don't know when we're going to have the vote. He, I mean, you, just let's, you, let's just go. Let, are we you can, asking we, me to hold we the can vote? Save, no, sure. I just like looking at you. Yeah. We, we can save, we can save the taxpayers millions of dollars. So, I mean, look, I used all of my time to show that this vote is never going to happen because they have no evidence on Joe Biden. I yield back. And now another one of the witnesses that the MAGA Republicans called, not the Russian spy, not the spy from the CCP from China. This is one who's incarcerated uh, for uh, pension fund fraud. And this is what Democratic Congress member Lynch had to say to him. Here, play this clip. We're reaching out to witnesses who have been convicted and sentenced to prison for stealing $80 million from the pensions of innocent workers. We, we can't get any lower at this point. That's your star witness. I want to, I want to remind people he's sitting in prison. That's why he can't be here today. He's sitting in prison for scamming workers' pensions. I mean, how low can you get? Then it's the Republicans' idea that this is the best guy they can get to testify against the president. This is the best guy they can get. A guy sitting in prison who can't even be here. Mr. Parnas, uh, you've... And the leader, the, uh, the Democratic leader on this committee is Jamie Raskin. Um, I can't wait for Raskin to be back in the majority, but... Raskin's been leading this crew. Here's what Democratic Congress member Raskin had to say about the, this hearing. Play this clip. Today, the good chairman and his ace mega detectives have finally jumped the shark. The comedy of errors comes crashing to an end as House Republicans in more than a dozen Biden districts beg for mercy and the committee throws a flabby Hail Mary pass three weeks after the Super Bowl's over. So today... We revisit the fruitless testimony of two more fading star witnesses who have failed to testify to any presidential wrongdoing, much less evidence. Oh, of course, you know, we love to showcase Democratic Congress member Krishnamurthy here from uh, Illinois. Here's what he had to say. Play this clip. But, but lots of times. Is there anything that you'd like to relate to us about your conversations with Donald Trump that would bear on the uh, conduct of these proceedings? I mean, Donald Trump was aware of everything that was going on on that day in the Red Room when we were in uh, the uh, White House after Rudy bringing Donald Trump up to speed on uh, that I could go out to Ukraine and get Victor Shokin. Donald Trump approached me, shook my head, said, thank you for all that you're doing. Keep up the good work, patted me on the back, took pictures, and I was off to Ukraine. To meet with Victor Shokin? To, to find Victor Shokin, to bring him back here to meet with Lindsey Graham. Got it. Thank you so much. Running Midas Touch takes up just about all of my time. Like seriously, most of it. That's why when I needed a workout that was convenient and effective, Total Gym turned out to be a total game changer. Do you want a total body workout in just 10 to 20 minutes? Well, you need to try Total Gym. Right now, you could try Total Gym for 30 days for just $1 plus free shipping. Seriously. $1. The Total Gym Fit, Total Gym's newest model, lets you do over 85 exercises in one home gym, and you'll never get bored working out again. And Total Gym accommodates all fitness levels from ages 8 to 80, so literally anyone listening to this can enjoy the Total Gym. I did a Total Gym workout literally today. I did a lower body workout, and Total Gym comes with all these note cards that help you build your workout plan depending on what muscles you're trying to hit. How Total Gym works is by using a percent of your body weight as resistance. You set the resistance level higher to build muscle, lower to tone and slenderize. The unique design allows you to easily move from one exercise to another without having to add or remove weights. That means you could do strength training, cardio, and stretching all in one machine. I've been bragging to my brothers every day about the progress I made on Total Gym, and with each workout, I've been increasing the incline, and I feel myself getting stronger every single day. Plus, with Total Gym, there is no assembly required. It sets up in minutes right out of the box, and it conveniently folds for storage under your bed or in your closet. 
What makes Total Gym so effective? Well, you work out multiple muscle groups simultaneously. So what used to take 60 plus minutes now only takes 10 to 20 minutes with Total Gym. And Total Gym can now be found in over 4 million homes. So they aren't just another fitness trend. They are a brand you could trust. Remember, it only takes 10 to 20 minutes a day to reshape your body. Head to TotalGymDirect.com slash Midas for an additional 20% off your order. Plus, that includes a free ab crunch attachment and free shipping. The special offer won't be available for much longer. That's TotalGymDirect.com backslash Midas for an additional 20% off. And make sure you go to our URL, TotalGymDirect.com slash Midas, so they know I sent you. That's M-E-I-D-A-S. You know, and then I love where like uh, like James Comer was then trying to like uh, go after Jamie Raskin and go after the Democrats and say, well, why do you have Lev? Why is Lev here? Who's this guy? We we want to show the partners of uh, of Hunter Biden. Okay, first off, why you keep why are you guys so obsessed with Hunter Biden? And then you'll see what 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 uh, the response is though. He's Trump's partner, Lev Parnas. He was Trump's partner. That's the point. Play the clip. Back to you, Mr. Chairman. And I'd like to remind the the ranking member and Ms. Norton, the witness, uh, Mr. Galanis, was partners with Hunter Biden. That's why he's here. We have their partners. You could have invited partners, but you invited. Uh, this guy. Yeah, Donald Trump's partner, Mr. Uh, Parnas, who oh, was working with was Donald, Donald Trump, Trump and Rudy Giuliani. Rudy, Rudy Giuliani's All right, partner. Okay, yeah. All right. Uh, chair recognized. Yeah, he stepped into that one. Here, folks, is AOC. Gotta love when she brings the fire to these uh, hearings. Play this clip. Clearly, what we are seeing here today is a continuation of the 15-month saga of the Republican majority lost in the desert. Impeachment 101, the majority party or whomever is raising impeachment must accuse the president of a high crime, a specific high crime or misdemeanor. I would like to submit to the record HRES 918, the House resolution to open this impeachment inquiry. Without objection to order. This resolution does not outline a high crime or misdemeanor. It's not here. Now, when we compare the chairman's opening from his previous opening, he's talking about Ukraine and Burisma and all of this. It is this entire inquiry is based on a blockbuster piece of information that was in a classified skiff room. And inside that room was a document alleging President Biden directly of a $10 million bribery scheme, a $10 million bribery scheme, extremely serious. What happened? What happened a month ago, Mr. Chairman? That document, the FBI arrested the person who offered those allegations for falsifying the, his testimony at, to the FBI. This entire impeachment inquiry is based on an, on an actual, provable individual who has lied. Now, responsible leadership would withdraw an inquiry based on that. Withdraw it. Instead, what we are seeing is that this committee was warned about the falsehoods of these allegations long before that, warned by Trump Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, and yet they proceeded anyway. The chairman proceeded anyway. Got to show you one more clip of Democratic Congresswoman Jasmine Crockett. Play this clip. Auditioning or something like that, because, Mr. Bobulinski, I know that you take exception to the fact that your credibility has been called into question over and over. But when someone comes to testify under oath, whether it's before this committee, behind closed doors or in person, then we have to evaluate someone's credibility. And, sir, I definitely have always had issues with your credibility, as I know that you are very well aware of. So let me remind you of well, what you, happened behind <clears throat> closed doors. I well, you should asked, ask Ro Khan I about my credibility. You a question. Okay. You are when I, I haven't. So oh, when okay, I ask I'm you a sorry. question, that's when you answer. Otherwise, I'm talking. So excuse me with my time, because it's my time. I want to be clear that when we were behind closed doors, you called a number of people liars and Democrats. Uh, they said, OK, well, why don't we do if, if you're so focused on the fact that you claim that President Biden, when he was not the president, when Trump was in office, when President Biden wasn't even the VP in the interim period, 
The fact that he loaned his son $4,000 for a car, which was paid back. And that's one of your major obsessions. Um, should we focus on Jared Kushner getting, I don't know, $3 billion from the Saudis, UAE, and Qatar? Want to focus on that? How about we subpoena Kushner, everybody, and watch as the MAGA Republicans block it. Play the clip. Chair Nell recognizes. Mr. Chairman, um, I, I have a motion. I would uh, move pursuant to Clause 2K6 of Rule 11 that the committee issue a subpoena to Jared Kushner to compel testimony related to the $2 billion collected from Saudi Arabia uh, after his service within the White House. Second. There's a motion. And sec for what purpose does the gentleman from Ohio seek recognition? Uh, move to table the motion. There's a motion is not, the motion to table is not debatable. Uh, as many as are in favor of tabling signify by saying, ah, ah. All those opposed signify by saying no. No. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. And the motion to and th this one just to me is the icing on the cake where you'll see Jamie Raskin looking at Congress member Moskowitz with a smile, just kind of proud of this team that he's assembled. These Democrats who are kicking ass. Play the clip. I think we should do it today. Let's just call for it. I'll, I'll make the motion, Mr. Chairman. I want to help you out. You can second it, right? Like make the motion to impeach President Biden. Go ahead. It's your turn. Se you second it. No, nothing. Okay, we got nothing. So I want it with my last couple. Love to see it. Love to see it. Anyway, tell me what you think. And I love just sharing what's going on in these committees with you because I know they're on C-SPAN. But I think it's helpful when we take a look at like, wow, this is some good messaging. Share these clips. Let people know what's going on. Because again, to me, it's not even a Democrat-Republican issue anymore. I mean, James Comer's this kind of MAGA Trumpy cult. This is some weirdo stuff on the on the Republican side that's gone full MAGA. And I don't care what political party you're from. Like when you see, you know, when you see Moskowitz and Crockett and Goldman and Krishnamurthy and Raskin and AOC and Garcia and this whole team, like you gotta be like, yo, these are these are some smart people, right? Like like these people are intelligent. Like we want smart people representing us right like anyway, tell me what you think i'm ben micellas have a wonderful day hey midas mighty love this report continue the conversation by following us on instagram at midas touch to keep up with the most important news of the day what are you waiting for follow us now